so I've been thinking about switching over to iPhone. This isn't your typical, I'm switching to iPhone only to switch back to an Android a month or two later. That's honestly really cliche and annoying on YouTube. I'm generally thinking about switching to the iPhone, but I really haven't decided yet. There's a bunch of stuff that has been bugging me about my experience on Android and some things I wish I would had that I would gain from having an iPhone. And I know many of you have similar feelings. So if you resonate with anything I talk about in this video, let me know in the comments. So here are some reasons why I'm thinking of switching to the iPhone and plenty of reasons why I'm hesitant to change. One of the best things about Android, especially on the Google Pixel, is the addition of great software features that could be pretty amazing and helpful, like call screening and hold the phone. There are many neat features found on Android phones, like the Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy devices. All these features are great in theory, but when they don't work or there are bugs in a bunch of other areas, especially in core functionality, it really doesn't matter. Essentially, I'm becoming frustrated with feeling like I'm part of a beta test all the time. Android 12 and 13 has been filled with so many bugs and issues. I have apps like OfferUp that will increasingly lag the more I type, resulting in the app force closing. Apps like Instagram, something that is critical for my work, will instantly close on open randomly for several days at a time and then start working without any reason. This happened with the YouTube Studio app for months at a time, which is even more critical for my work. Then some services and apps require me to log in with my Facebook account, but I'll run into login loops that will make it impossible for me to log in. Then you have issues with YouTube, Google's own app glitching out and not displaying anything in its card. And then there's the swipe gestures that didn't work for months at a time, and then on and on. So many of these issues are so detrimental to the actual experience of using the device that it becomes incredibly frustrating to use. And sure, Google is working on many of these things and some are fixed now, but it shouldn't take months to make it so that the swipe gestures don't freeze on you. I also can't imagine Android reaching stability for another generation at minimum. It seems like Google went through all this massive uh, visual overhaul that looks all new while everything underneath the surface is hanging on by duct tape. But to be fair, iOS 16 has more bugs than usual. I've experienced some issues with YouTube playback just randomly stopping and then the only way I can resume it is by rewinding it a little bit and then hitting play again. Kind of weird. Uh, I seem to have the perfect track record of going going between platforms during their worst seasons, like when the iPhone had Intel modems and I constantly lost signal. At the end of the day, I just want a phone that works reliably the way it should, whichever platform it is. If you look at the inside of an iPhone, it's hard to deny that they really care about manufacturing and designing things well with higher quality parts and have incredible attention to detail. It's that attention to detail for errors that most people won't see that seeps through into everything else that people do see and experience. You can see it in the quarter radius of the phone and the way that the software perfectly aligns with that radii, how all the icons perfectly align, and even the interface with its shadows, blurs, animations, consistency, and more. All these small things add up to a big thing, a very clean and cohesive experience that any designer would appreciate and many will likely subconsciously feel. And oddly, Google got rid of shadows and went for a kinda cartoony, flat, honestly, a bit Fisher Price-like looking material you. And they can't even reach consistency in design amongst their own apps. Plus, it's hard to argue that Apple understands animations in ways that we simply do not see on Android. The Dynamic Island has this deep understanding of animation from traditional animators that make cartoons or movies. It has weight, velocity, spring and bounce. It honestly makes you think of Flubber. It's honestly its own character. What would you get on Android other than pretty typical vanilla animation that goes in and out without any character or charm? Then there's the battery life. Google and Samsung have had rough battery lives for the Pixel 6 Pro and the Galaxy S22 Ultra. On the worst end, the Pixel 6 Pro only lasts me until about 2 p.m. until I need to charge it all the way to last until bedtime. The S22 Ultra dies during the evening before I go to bed. With the iPhone, I'll get into bed and have a little over 20% left on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That's pretty good considering people are saying that they're getting worse battery life on the iPhone 14 models over the iPhone 13 models. Not having battery anxiety is honestly worth a lot in my opinion. The only time I've been able to drain the battery life on the iPhone 14 Pro Max really fast was when I went to this event this past weekend and took photos and videos for hours. All right, it is 810 and we're at about 19% battery life. We've been taking a lot of photos and videos. I'm getting a little bit of battery anxiety here, so I'm going to start charging it. Thankfully, I was able to get through the night because I had an Arc Hybrid MagFit wireless portable charger to get me through the night from this video sponsor, Spigen. My battery was about to run out and I still had a couple hours left that I needed to take pictures and videos and then call an Uber to get home. I quickly put on the Arc Hybrid MagFit, which has a 5,000 milliamp capacity and a 7.5 watt charging speed over MagSafe. That's 3.4 times the capacity and 1.5 times the speed of Apple's own MagSafe battery pack at a far more affordable price. I just slapped it on the back of my phone, gained battery life to add dinner to my night and still made it home with a charge to spare. It's really nice charging without having a heavy brick and cable that I have to hold onto. This thing is shockingly light and convenient and magnets are so convenient. Spigen also has their ArcStation GAN 35 watt dual USB-C wall charger. This thing is cheaper than the Apple version by almost
almost 50%, but it's also 30% smaller because of how efficient GAN technology is that shrinks chargers down. This thing is so dang tiny, holy cow. They have many other GAN chargers to choose from, like these tiny 45 watt and 65 watt chargers that can quickly charge even a MacBook Air or other USB-C compatible devices. Speaking also has a ton of other great accessories and cases for the Apple iPhone 14 series, so check out the links in the description to pick them up, and thanks so much to Speaking for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, despite Google's refresh of the visual style of Android recently, it strangely feels like Android is becoming stale. Part of that is the result of a mature smartphone market, which even Apple struggles with. Everyone's phones and OSs mostly have the same design with a modest increase in specs and performance. Like, I mean, sometimes I don't know which one's which. If it wasn't for the dynamic island, I actually wouldn't know which one is the newest iPhone. And the Pixel 7 Pro seems to be the equivalent of the difference between the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 14, so not, not really much of a difference. The difference that is there is that Apple is ahead with their processors a bit slowly between generations, despite most modern processors being pretty great for almost everything. As a whole, it doesn't really feel like there's much interesting happening with smartphones altogether. The reality is that there are no massive leaps forward with hardware because smartphones across the board got really good and stopped sucking, honestly. So that leaves us software. But what changes have they added to Android lately that most people will use and feel, well, delighted in? Android phones feel like really nothing is happening, both in hardware and software, and foldables are just, uh, you know, they're okay. And in many ways, the excitement and feeling of delight is coming from that software, and that's where Apple is winning. The Dynamic Island has a lot of charm, cleverness, and flubber-like character, bringing a bit of delight to it. On Android, software and features struggle to instill or even try to instill a feeling of joy. Instead, we're often met with vanilla options or sterile options. I think Samsung is an excellent example of throwing everything you can at a phone, but it still feels really sterile. It lacks charm and personality, so I agree with Max Weinbeck. It feels clinical. And to keep things fair, Dynamic Island isn't as hype as it felt on the announcement. The videos we saw were the hype reel of all the things it could do, but in practice, you really don't interact with it much, and it's really not doing that much for now. Apple did open it up to developers and will surely integrate more of their features into that Dynamic Island, so it will become more, well, dynamic and active and something that you regularly interact with. If you want the iPhone for the Dynamic Island alone, maybe wait for the iPhone 15 Pro. Another thing that's interesting about a mature smartphone market is the lack of areas to improve or have dramatic leaps forward. So you're seeing this merging of features between iOS and Android. For hardware, you had larger displays coming to the iPhone, now you have wireless charging, fast refresh rate screens, crash detection, which came to the Pixel first, and silent services that are already coming to the iPhone. Then you have software like widgets that seem better designed, more practical, more stable, and fit within the rest of the UI better. Yes, you don't have as much flexibility with your home screen and it makes it hard to have a ton of blank space on your home screen, but what the heck is with the Google search bar and the at a glance widget that I can't remove from Android? I thought Android 12 and 13 was about personalization and material new just gotta keep it fair and balanced, right? And then there's the always on display, which to be fair is a bit extra and perhaps a lacking restraint because it kind of bothers me and others, but that's the Apple way. They try to take what has worked before and do it better with more refinement. They let others be the beta users and typically release a refined version so their users don't feel like they're in that beta test. But all that to say, if iOS is becoming more like Android in terms of features and capability that they didn't previously have, but with better execution, what makes me want to stay with Android? But not everything is great about the iPhone. Notifications are still a nightmare, and I wish I had great software features like call screening, hold the phone, spam detection for messages, and more flexibility with default apps like making the Google Assistant my primary assistant. And AirDrop is still so glitchy. It only works half the time when you send something from your Mac. I also find that file management continues to be frustrating on the iPhone, especially with Google Drive. I've wanted to upload videos that I post to social media to my Google Drive, but I can't download them to my iPhone to post them again. To be fair, that's only a weird quirk with Google Drive, not Dropbox or other services, so maybe that's actually still a Google issue. And then the camera isn't up to par for me compared to the Google Pixel for photos. The skin tones look all weird for people that um, aren't white, and I hate how it pushes the highlights so they clip and then crush the blacks on photos. And then there's the hardware, like the wide aspect ratio for the iPhone Pro Max that just makes it feel too chunky in the hand compared to some Something like the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, which has a feel that's a bit more narrow. But one of the biggest things is a lack of USB-C. I know many people are holding out on the iPhone because it still uses a stupid lightning port. It makes little sense to have these professional settings like ProRes RAW for photos and ProRes for video with frustratingly slow data transfer options like lightning and airdrop. My old roommate that works in Hollywood hates dealing with iPhone footage because it takes forever to offload files. Even more frustrating is that my keyboard and mouse use lightning ports to charge for my computer that doesn't have lightning ports, but USB-C ports. Why is this a thing? It's so frustrating. 
so yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what I'll do. I'm honestly not quite sure. There are a lot of frustrations on the Android side right now, and I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to spend my time tinkering. I simply just want it to work reliably and consistently. On the other hand, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is fine and solid, but it's not really that big of a change compared to last year. Maybe I just need to wait and see what the Pixel 7 Pro brings and go from there. Hopefully the software isn't as buggy and the main things should work as they should. <sighs> But I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you frustrated with Android right now too? Are you considering switching the iPhone? Why? Have you already switched to an iPhone? Why? How is it going for you? Let me know in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community discord chat server. There's a link in the description next to those links to pick up the new iPhone and accessories. So thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.